craft a game or sports accessory today on Hands On. Hands-on is made possible by Elmer's Products, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmer's.com Floracraft Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. Make it fun crafts.com What could be more fun than combining games and crafts? We can craft a game board, make up a game, or even celebrate our favorite team. I'm Candy Cooper, and we begin today with team bracelets in your school colors. Then make a shoe tag for your backpack or sports bag. Then it's two games, alien miniature golf, and finally a game board, all from buttons. Let's get started with our bracelets. My school colors were red and black, so I decided to make the first bracelet in those colors. Let's take a look. Okay, so you'll need some bandanas in your school colors, some stretchy bracelets, pony beads, tacky glue, some masking tape, and some scissors. So the first thing you're gonna do is grab a bandana and you're gonna cut it down the center. I'm gonna fold this in half, but you're gonna cut it all down the center so that you get a really long strip. And don't worry if your cuts are not super straight because you won't even be able to tell. The next thing you're gonna do is cut a really thin strip. So this is about half an inch. And I've got some ready right here, but you get the idea. Don't worry about jig jaggy cuts. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is grab one of your stretchy bracelets and string a few beads. And then you're gonna tie the two ends of the bandana together. But before you seal up your knot, you're gonna stick the end of the bracelet, not the tapered end, because that's the end you need to string beads, but you're gonna stick the end of the bracelet in the knot and close it. And so now, oops, we have something like this. Okay, now to make it easier to work on, I like to put a piece of tape over the end and really burnish it down so it doesn't move. And what you're gonna do is a little macrame technique, which is kind of a square knot. And you're gonna take the first one and what I kind of tell myself is to just make a triangle, put this one the red one on top of the end, and then pull the red one through the hole. And pull your knot up to the top. And then you're gonna do that again with the, the zebra print. Make a triangle, put the red one over top, and then under the bracelet. And if you get confused, you can go to our website for the full instructions and then push that up to the top. Now, after two knots, then you're gonna slide one of your pony beads into place, and then you're gonna start again. And this time I'm gonna start with the red. So I'm gonna make a triangle, put the zebra print on top, under the bracelet, and through the loop. And you're just gonna keep repeating that two knots. Let's do it one more time. Make a triangle, zebra print on top, under the bracelet and up through the loop. And then slide your pony bead in place. And you're gonna do that for the full length of the bracelet until you have something that looks like this. Okay, to end, to finish up the ends, you're just gonna finish 
with one more little knot and then to make sure that these things aren't going anywhere I'm going to put a touch of tacky glue on top whoops there we go of the knot and then tie this one last time and that will keep it really secure so you can wear these while you're playing sports maybe and then trim the ends and you have a finished bracelet. The two on the bottom are just like the ones I just made. And then this one on here is just has small knotted scraps going around with pony beads separating each little knotted strip. Everyone's sport bag or backpack starts to look the same, except for the one with this great tag. So we've made little shoes that'll identify whose bag they are. Here's what you'll need. We have plastic lacing, decorative edge scissors, and then you can either use felt and sticky back felt or foam and sticky back foam. We have a little piece of acetate or an old uh, uh, folder. We have also some black foam, a split key ring, um, a hole punch, then we have a black marker and some scissors. So let's get started. First thing is, is that there are pattern pieces that you can find on our website. You're going to cut the base of your shoe out of white, and this is sticky back foam. I've got one cut here. Then the second piece is the inside part of your shoe. That also is cut from a sticky back foam. And you're going to want to mark the holes right here, which are going to be your punch holes for your lacing. And then your final piece is cut just from regular foam. So I've got my three pieces cut out. Then I also want to cut a circle out of a piece of paper and then I also want to cut that same circle shape out of the center here and I've got one already done here so the circle is cut out I'm going to put a name underneath sandwich that in and put the acetate over it and that's just to protect the name so it doesn't smear so you could also put a phone number or some identification let me trim this acetate down a little bit now you're going to want to sandwich this on top of your shoe. So I'm going to lay my shoe out first. Then I'm going to take my bottom, which is the bottom of the sneaker, tennis shoe, and put that on. Let's line that up oh, good there. And you can always trim it off on the edge. Then I'm going to lay my name and the piece of acetate down. And then peel off the back on the other part of the shoe. And that gets laid down right there. And we'll smooth that right in. So then the next thing you want to do, and you can always slip that out here, right here too, if you need to change anything. Next thing we want to do is punch our holes. Let me get my, grab my hole punch here. I'm going to slide that in and punch each of these sections. And I'd punch all five holes and also one hole here. And I want to take my black foam and I've used my decorative edge scissors here in the zigzag pattern and just cut a skinny strip there that's going to cover over that center section right in between the colors. So I'm going to go right across here, take my scissors and trim that off. So now I've got my basic shoe shape. The next thing I'm going to do is to take my marker and I'm going to add stitch lines and I'll add them down the back of the shoe, just like they were stitched on a regular tennis shoe. All the way down here, across the front, and across here. And right here I've got a little piece of that acetate slipping out. Let me trim that down a little bit. So I've got room to stitch, put my stitch lines. And I'm just using a black permanent marker. Let's thicken these up so they're all nice and even. Okay, now I've got my basic shoe shape, and I've got one here that's all completed with all of the holes punched. So the next thing we want to do is put our lacing in. I've cut uh, about a yard of lacing. You can measure just by stretching it in your arm. And I'm going to fold that in half. And starting at the bottom of the shoe, 
I'm going to go to the halfway point, crisscross, and come from the back. Take the next one, crisscross again, come from the front. You can lace these any way you'd like, but we were just trying to do an X pattern to kind of sim stim simulate what a shoelace would look like. Come from the back on this one, come back through the same hole. Slide that through. And you'd continue lacing all the way up to the top of the shoe, tie it off here just like it was a regular shoelace, and then trim any edges. Then the last thing you want to do is attach it to your backpack. Here we've used a split key ring which just slides right in. And just remember then to put the information so that if your backpack or your sports bag gets lost, they'll know where to find you. You can make your own version of miniature golf to brush up on your putting skills. Take a look at this great golf game. We're going to make our putter, and then we're going to make the different cups in different colors, and these are aliens. Here's what you'll need. First of all, you need plastic cups in different colors. We have these really super big chenille stems. I have a large styrofoam disc, a styrofoam ball, which is going to be for your golf ball, you're going to need three eggs if you're going to make three different cups and three of the uh, discs. Then we're going to have some large wiggly eyes, some one inch rounds, um, a larger round, just some sticks or skewers, and then we also have some leaf shapes, tacky glue, paint in whatever colors that you'd like to use, pom-poms are optional, and then some of our tools. I've got a black pen or black marker, um, I have a stencil brush for painting the styrofoam, regular brush, a, an old candle and a plastic knife, and also just a little round of masking tape. Okay, the first thing you want to do to get started is we're going to trace our cup. And so you can use whatever size cup you happen to have. So we're going to trace it on the styrofoam. And I'm trying to get as close as possible to the edge here because then when you putt, the actual the ball will go into the cup. Now today we're only going to be making one of the cups, but you can make as many as you'd like depending on how many holes of golf you're going to play. Now I'm going to take my candle and go over the plastic knife just to make it easier to slide through the styrofoam and I'm going to poke down on the edge of the table and then just use a sawing motion to cut this shape out. Now don't don't be afraid if this is not perfectly smooth because our cup is going to sit right down in here. Now, I'm not going to take the time to cut this all out, but it's really easy to cut and that'll pop right out. Now the next thing we want to do is to start painting. And the first thing I want to do is paint my disc. And one of the things about styrofoam is that it has all these little nooks and crannies. So I've poured a pretty generous portion of paint here and I'm going to pounce down. Now, if you have adult supervision, you could also use a spray paint to do this. But I'm just going to pounce down until I've covered the entire disc. Now, if you're playing a game, you might want to make each one of these a different color. So I've chosen orange for this one. You might want to make a blue one and a green one. So I'd continue painting until that's all covered. I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm also going to paint the egg orange to match, and this is going to be for my putter. I could also, if I like, paint my stick, which is also to make my golf club. And remember on this, you're going to have an adult help you cut this down so it's the right height for you. And then I'm going to paint my little pieces and parts. Now each one of my golf uh, cups are going to have a marker that tells what hole it is. So it can match your stick or it could be a different color. So I paint three of those. So I've got, let's say if I'm doing three holes and it'd be hole one, two, and three. Then I'm going to paint my little circles to match. And I'm, since I'm painting this one orange, I'm going to paint all my accessories purple because that's the opposite color on the color wheel. And then I've got my wiggly eyes and I have my sticks. Now, you can opt to cho or choose to paint your sticks or you can leave them just plain color. I'm going to leave mine plain. But I'm going to show you a tip for painting these little tiny pieces so you don't get paint all over you. 
just take a ring of masking tape, put it over your fingers just like that, and if you put that disc down right on top of the masking tape, and then take your paintbrush and paint, you don't get any paint on you. You can still get around the edge and get a really nice coat of paint on it. And then you can just leave it on that paint like that, or I'm sorry, on the masking tape until it dries. So it makes it nice and easy. So I think we're pretty much ready to get start assembling. So let's make our stick first. I'm gonna take my stick. This one happens to be squared off, so it's gonna be really easy to glue on. And I'm gonna use my purple, and I'm gonna make this hole number one. So I'm gonna do a little line around the edge just to be a little decorative. And put a big number one. Now at home, you're gonna be really careful to let this dry so that you don't smear it. Put some glue right on the top. And this is going to be hole number one. So we'll set that aside to dry. Now let's take some of these that I've got painted. Now I have an orange one that's totally painted here. And I'm gonna start decorating. Let's turn that front way so you can see that easier. Now it's time to start putting our dots because this is an alien golf game. So we're gonna just put some polka dots around. And I'm gonna make that big giant eye. And of course aliens only have one eye. And make sure at home you take the time to put a lot of extra glue down because you want your game to last for lots, lots of years. And we'll put a little couple more in here. And I think that should be good for now. And we can add more purple dots as we go along. Okay, now we're gonna take our cup the cup is actually gonna be glued down, but I'm not because we're working on a flat surface. It just pops right in like that and add some glue. And then when you play the game, you just set it straight up like that and then you can putt right in. So I'm gonna set that back down, slide that out. And we've got our stick and hopefully this is dry enough that it's not gonna slide. I'm gonna just poke that in here and I'll slide that down so you can see it. Now. Our alien has to have antenna. So I've taken my chenille stem and cut it in half, and I'm going to just poke it in at the top. Let's poke it on either side here. And there's wire inside chenille stems. The other thing that you wanna do when you're doing this at home, and in fact, I'm gonna do it on this one just so you can see, is put a little glue on the end so it really sticks well. And I'm gonna pull a little bit of that extra fiber off so that I can make it nice and secure. More glue. And just push that right into the styrofoam. Then to add a little bit more interest, what you can do is twirl this into any shape you'd like. You can use a pencil if you need to, but these are really easy to bend. And if you want, you can also, we had those two optional uh, pom-poms, you can glue those on the end if you'd like or if you don't want to. Other thing is, is you can take these pom-poms, you might wanna glue them on the front of your um, alien, just to make him look whatever you'd like. Now I've made a couple more here. I've made one in green with blue, and then I have a red one with green. You can use the same color cups or you can use different color cups. And then our final step is to take our egg and poke it into our dowel, add a little glue so it doesn't fall off, and you're ready to play golf. It's time to raid the button box for colorful leftover buttons. They do a lot more than button up a shirt on this fun game. Okay, so what you're gonna need to make this cute tic-tac-toe board are some buttons, straight pins, rickrack trim, a ruler, a candle, a plastic knife, pencil, some paint brushes, a glass, tacky glue, and some acrylic paint, and also some styrofoam boards. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually make the board. And what you wanna do is take your ruler 
and mark a nine inch square. So I've already kind of started on this side, but you're just gonna lay your ruler so it starts at zero and lines up along your edge, and then make a pencil mark. And I've got another one that I've done right here. And then you're gonna turn the board and measure again. Nine inches and nine inches. And then we're gonna use the ruler as a straight edge and line up those two points right there and grab your plastic knife and a little bit of candle. And then we're just gonna rub the candle on the knife, the sides of the knife. And what that's gonna do is help to let your knife just slide through the foam. Okay, so I've got my straight edge. We're just gonna score down, slow but sure, and just keep cutting until you have a nice, deep um, ridge. And eventually, we're gonna make it through there it goes. Okay, and now we'll do this again for the, the other side. You might want to add a little bit more wax. Okay. Ooh, there we go. Okay, and that should be good. And you can also kind of lay it on the side of the table and snap it. Now, to clean up your edges, you can rub another piece of foam along the sides and that'll kind of sand them up. You can also kind of use the edge of the table to smooth up your, your sides and form the foam. Okay, the next thing you're wanting gonna do is to cut your tic-tac-toe pieces. So to make the circles, we're gonna use our glass and you're just gonna push through to get a nice circle shape and you can kind of twist a little bit, and that gives you a nice circle pattern. And then you're gonna finish it up with your knife. And I've got one here ready to pop out, like so. Now this is where the forming especially comes in handy because you can knock off pieces like that just by rolling them on the table, like that. Okay, and then you're gonna wanna make some squares. And you'll need five each, so we're gonna just measure like we did before. And these need to be one and a half inch squares. So just mark one and a half in a couple spots. Use our straight edge ruler here. And knife to cut these pieces. Okay. And then this is about you can almost eyeball, I think, this one. And then just cut right through it, and we have a couple pieces. So the next part we're gonna do is paint all of our components to the game. And we'll start with the board, and you're just gonna wanna use a stiff brush. And I've got my paint here. And the great thing about using a stiff brush is it gets down into all the cracks and crevices. And you can make your game board, you know, whatever colors you want. We're using yellow here. And then you're going to finish and you'll have something like this. And then you'll want to paint all of your other little pieces whatever colors you want. We're going to paint these squares aqua and the circles purple. Okay, so I've got some pieces already here, ready to go. And the next thing we're gonna do is split the, the board up into sections with, sorry, I'm gonna use the white rickrack on top. So we're gonna divide it up into three equal sections and you're just gonna cut your rickrack so that it fits. I'm gonna grab my scissors. And just keep cutting pieces. And then you're gonna use your tacky glue to adhere the rickrack to the board. Okay. In sections, like so. I'm kind of, I'm kind of eyeballing this here, but you can actually get your ruler and straight edge out like we did before and and um, measure precisely. Okay, and then the other thing you're gonna wanna do 
is glue the trim around the edge. <clears throat> and how you get this to stay while it dries is by using straight pins. And you can just glue and stick those in as you go. The last thing you're going to want to do is glue some buttons to the tops of your pieces just to add a little, you know, jazz them up a little bit here. And you can stack them however you like. And that really adds a special little finishing touch to your game pieces. And now let's make the teal one. And we're going to use round buttons for this one. Don't worry if you can see the glue, you know, when it dries, it'll be clear. And then you're just going to top it off with a couple more buttons just to add a little height and fun. And there you go. And that's our cute little tic-tac-toe board. And that's the final episode of this season of Hands On. We hope that you try to make crafting a part of every day and surround yourself with things you make and make being creative a part of who you are. See you again next season on Hands On. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects for every occasion, season, and even school subject are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1413. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands-On Crafts for Kids, Crafting Every Day, Series 1400, is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Make crafting a part of every day with Hands-On. Hands-On is made possible by Elmer's Products manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmers.com Floracraft Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. Makeitfuncrafts.com